So today I'm really excited to start a new series and we're going to be looking at a whole range of different little mini Python projects, all related to cybersecurity and cybersecurity adjacent fields. So all these mini projects will be completely beginner friendly, meaning if you just know the basic Python syntax, then this is a great way to start applying your knowledge in a more practical manner, specifically related to fields that are hopefully of interest to you. And also know that for most of these projects, we'll actually be spending a few episodes on each. We're going to build on work we've done in previous weeks, allowing us greater insight into the mechanics of these little apps. And it'll help us better understand what the actual real world application of these programs will look like. Finally, I also want to mention, especially for beginners, these projects are not only a great opportunity for you to learn, but also they'll be great for your portfolio and will really help you break into cybersecurity if you're somebody that's currently looking for a job or you intend to apply for a job in the near future. Napoleon, like anyone can even know that. So in today's first lesson, we're just going to be building a very simple little firewall simulator. And the reason for this is it'll help us just to understand from a very high level the kind of mechanics or logic underpinning what exactly it is a firewall is doing. In follow-up videos, we'll work on this blueprint and add some meat to it. And in this way, we'll actually build some functional firewalls that you could potentially even use on your own system. But before we dig into it, I just want to give a brief 60 second max overview of exactly what a firewall is. So when most of us think of a firewall, probably the first thing that comes into your head is a piece of hardware. And you're not completely wrong, firewalls are often housed in their own unique dedicated hardware, especially in an enterprise application. But honestly, a firewall is really just the program. It's a program that sits exactly at the interface between an internal network, as well as an untrusted external network like the internet. The program then monitors all incoming traffic to the network, and then it evaluates the traffic based on a set of predetermined rules. Each evaluation will lead to one of two outcomes. Either the rule will determine that you should block the traffic, in which case the data packets are dropped and it's not allowed to enter into the internal network, or alternatively, the rule will allow for the data to enter the network. So think of a firewall really as an algorithmic bouncer. It stands in front of an entrance and decides who is allowed in and who is not allowed in. So today's simple firewall simulator is basically going to do four things. First, we're going to use a Python dictionary to define a set of firewall rules. Then after that, we'll use a function to generate a list of random IP numbers, which will simulate network traffic. Then for each of these simulated IPs, we'll apply the rule and decide on an action, either allow or block. And finally, we'll output to the terminal the result of each evaluation. All right, that's it. So let's get to our actual code. Okay, everyone, here in our IDE, we're first going to import the random module, and we're just going to use this module for the purposes of our simulation. Now for the rest of the code, I'm actually going to start at the bottom and we'll work our way upwards. And the reason for this is simply because due to the nature of how this code will run, I think it'll be easier for us to understand it that way. So right at the bottom, we'll drop our main guard and the main guard simply ensures that when the script is executed, that the main function is called. After this, we're going to define our main function and our main function will consist of two main parts. First, we have our firewall rules, which in this case is represented by a dictionary with key value pairs representing the IP address as well as the action taken. In other words, here we can see I've decided on six arbitrary IP addresses. And for the purposes of simulation, these are six IP addresses that we've decided not to allow onto our internal network. And now for the second part of our main function, we can see here that we're declaring a for loop that will run 12 times. And this for loop is really just going to simulate network traffic we create the variable IP address, which is assigned the value returned by the generate random IP function. Below this, we create a variable named action, which is assigned the value returned by the function check firewall rules when it is called with the arguments IP address and firewall rules. And here's our third and final variable random number to which is simply assigned a random number between zero and 9,999. And for the purpose of our simulation, this will simply serve as a unique identifier, allowing us to, for example, when we take multiple action against the same source IP, to be able to distinguish between the different instances of those actions. And finally, in our main function, we're going to print to the terminal, the IP address of the packet that was analyzed, the action taken against that IP address, and the random unique identifying number. So let's now look at the two other functions called specifically in our for loop, generate random IP and check firewall rules. So here we define the generate random IP function, which is simply going to return a value of 192.168.0.0.0. 
1 and a random value between 0 and 20 for the final octet. Here we just generate a random IP number that represents the source IP. And finally we define our check firewall rules function which receives IP and rules as arguments. First we use a for loop to unpack the dictionary by using the items function. For each of the IPs on our block list it'll compare the randomly generated IP and see if they match. If they match it means that the source IP is indeed on our block list in which case it returns action, which in this case is block. And if the randomly generated IP does not match any of the IPs on our list, then it will return the action allow. And now before we run our code, I just want to give one final high level rundown of it. On the top, we import the random module to generate random IP addresses. Below this, we define the generate random IP function, which generates a random IP address for us. Below this we define the firewall rules function which takes an IP address and the dictionary of rules as arguments. It'll check each time if the given IP address matches any of the rules and it'll return the corresponding action. Below this we define our main function which contains the core logic of the script. First we define a dictionary firewall rules with predefined rules where we match the IP we wish to block with the action we wish to take. Below this we simulate network traffic by generating 12 random IP addresses and checking them against the firewall rules. And then finally we'll print the IP address and the corresponding action, whether allowed or blocked, for each simulated traffic. Finally below we call the main guard, which just ensures that our main function runs once the script is executed. And so let's go ahead and actually run our code. And we can see 12 simulated instances of an IP address, an action taken, as well as a random unique identifier. We can match this up against our original script and we can indeed see that 16, 9 and 16 were all blocked correctly and all the other IPs were allowed through correctly. All right guys, so that's it for this first little script. I mean, admittedly, it is a little bit silly because if we really think about what we just did, we didn't really create anything that interacts with the network traffic. We really just created a little script that matches patterns. But at the same time, let's not take this for granted. This really helps us to understand from a very rudimentary level exactly how a firewall is structured to make decisions. This also invites us to start thinking a little bit deeper about a firewall. For example, how we wrote this script today, what are some of the potential weaknesses what could be a good application of writing it this way? And maybe what other situations would we need to write it in a different way? Just as a very simple example, if you think about what we did today, we basically told the script, hey, allow everyone in this network except this list of IPs. So in other words, there is a level of implicit trust. It basically says trust everyone except these few people. So this will be a good application for something like a web server. Obviously, you cannot possibly guess every single IP that will come to your web server. So it's safer to say anyone's allowed. And if for some reason there are specific IPs, maybe you got it from an intelligent feed that you do not want to connect to your web server, then you can add them specifically to your block list. On the other hand, if this firewall, for example, were to sit in front of a private network, then obviously we'd invert it in a sense. We'd basically say trust no one, block every single IP. And instead we'd give it a list of specific IPs and tell it basically only these IPs are allowed on the network. So in the following lesson, which I hopefully will publish in just a few days, we're going to build on this and we're going to create an actual real world functional firewall that'll be able to detect potential denial of service attacks and then block an IP that is suspected of attacking us. All right, guys, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. If there are any specific mini projects you can think of you would like me to do in the future, let me know below in the comments section. And if you enjoyed this video, obviously I would appreciate a like or maybe even a subscribe. And until next time, peace out.